When considering alkenes, it's often important to uh, understand what alkenes will be uh, more stable um, because stability will affect how much of a given alkene product will be produced. Okay, so uh, let's look at um, an example here. Uh, say uh, this would be one butene, four carbons there. Um, and uh, if we look at this, all right, we have the alkene on the end, all right. Um, an alternate location for that double bond would be um, like this in the middle, okay. But we can have two stereoisomers for this, where we have this would be the cis two butene and we could have also the trans-2-butene, okay, with the branches on the opposite sides of that double bond, right? So if we compare these three alkenes, uh, what we find is that uh, the alkene on the end, okay, which has, if, if you look at this, we have one hydrogen, atom there and uh, two more hydrogen atoms attached on that end. So we have a total of three hydrogens and then one carbon attached to that double bond. Whereas these other two, they have two carbons and then two hydrogens. Okay, so it turns out that um, uh, the, the, the isomer with the most um, substituents, okay, we, we call it the most substituted alkene. It has two branches uh, on these ones. Um, these are more stable than when there's only one, uh, one branch, okay. So you, if you look at this, uh, um, I uh, have actually drawn these in an increasing energy scale. Right? So the energy increases, meaning it becomes less and less stable. Right? So if you had a choice uh, between one of these two alkenes, okay, um, you would go, uh, the, the major product would be the more stable one. Okay? Um, now, the reason for the, uh, the increased stability here is that... Uh, the double bond, you know, think of the effect of that double bond uh, from a, as, a, as compared with a, a single bond, right? The double bond, uh, it has two bonds, right? It has that, that sigma bond between the carbons, and then you have the uh, two pi orbitals with overlap there, and so it has a second uh, set of overlap, and that tends to bring the atoms closer together, okay? Those two carbon atoms would be brought closer together than they would in, uh, in a single bond. And that uh, increases the electronegativity of the carbon of that double bond, right? And having a higher electronegativity, that means it um, ad attracts electrons to itself uh, more, okay, because it's closer, uh, closer together, those carbons are, attracts the electrons more. Um, and so if you compare the substituents, right, the, in this case, we have a, a CH3 constituent, right, where this carbon has three uh, relatively electropositive um, atoms on it, all right, making it uh, where it contributes um, electrons a little bit better than just a simple hydrogen, right? So the, the methyl group is able to donate electrons better than the hydrogen, and that serves to stabilize that uh, sp2 carbon because it uh, is more, uh, you know, it's attracting electrons, and so when you give it electrons, um, that it's attracted to that stabilizes or reduces its energy. Right? So here 
with all those hydrogens and only one methyl group, or, or in this case an ethyl group, but you have the, the carbon with uh, attached hydrogens um, that's going to have relatively the same uh, effect as the methyl group, um, but uh, only one group as opposed to the three hydrogens is less stable, has a higher energy than if you have multiple carbon groups. Okay, And then if you compare these two, the cis versus the trans, here we're looking at a different principle because they both have that same um, two, the same two carbon groups attached and two hydrogen um, attached. But this time, uh, you know, I I if you looked at this, you know, th those two carbons here are are kind of close to each other, you know, as opposed to here where they're they're away from each other. And anytime you have atoms that are close together, you know, there's a bunch of electrons um, all around the atoms, and, and so they're kind of repelling each other. Um, you know, they're repelling away from each other, whereas here there's really not um, much interaction between those two groups, right? And so since these are repelling, that increases the strain, increases the energy, um, reduces the stability of that alkene relative to the trans isomer. All right. So what we have are uh, some general principles. Cis is going to be uh, have a higher energy or less stable than the trans isomer in general. Okay, and uh, and then definitely you're going to have um, a uh, you know your more stable um, isomer is going to be the one that has more uh, carbon groups attached. Okay, or in general, more electron donating groups attached to uh, to that double bond, okay? Um, because that those electron donating groups tend to stabilize that um, that double bond, okay? So that's uh, how we get this ranking from the highest energy or the least stable to the lower. Uh, energy one. So these two are definitely lower than this one, and then between those two, the cis is a higher energy than the trans because of the steric uh, effect of those uh, uh, carbon groups. Okay, that repulsion called the steric effect. Okay, so if you look at this in the context of, um, say, uh, say you have some uh, um, you have this alcohol, okay? This would be 2-butanol, okay? Um, if you have this alcohol and you're, you're going to uh, react this with an acid to, uh, to get a dehydration reaction which will produce uh, the uh, alkene and water Okay, I'll go ahead and write the water in there. And then there's two possible ways or locations where that alkene might form, right? If, uh, if I take off my OH, okay, it's got to pull off another hydrogen to get that water. Well, that hydrogen can either come from this carbon or it can come from this carbon, okay? And if it comes from this carbon, it will form the double bond on the end like that. But if it pulls from this carbon, it'll form the double bond in the middle. Okay? So we have a uh, what we'll what we will get in this reaction is a mixture. Okay? S some, you know, organic reactions involve statistics. Actually any reaction involves statistics. Um, but it's particularly notable in organic reactions because you have these options, you know, well it can go this way or it can go that way. You can get different products um, and then you have to evaluate, well, which one is going to be more likely, okay? Probability comes into play. And the factors that affect probability are just like what we, uh, what we looked at uh, a second ago. 
where you have the energy, you know, the ones that uh, are higher energy are going to be less probable, okay? If you look at it from the perspective of molecular collisions and whatnot, um, you know, not or, or the, just the general energy of the molecules, okay, you'll have uh, kind of a, uh, a Boltzmann distribution of energy, okay, looking at uh, energy on the horizontal axis this time. Most of the molecules will have a certain amount of, uh, of energy, okay, this would be the uh, number of molecules. Um, and uh, so most of them will have an average energy and if you need a higher energy you have fewer and fewer molecules that will have that higher energy okay so in order to produce the product that that has a higher energy you have to have the molecules that have that original energy in them otherwise it won't form so you're talking about a smaller percentage of the molecules um, whereas this one, which is um, the lower part of, of our um, uh, uh, energy scale, all right, has a lower energy, meaning we're looking more this way on our distribution curve, meaning there's a greater abundance of, uh, of molecules that will have that lower energy. Right? So, um, and, and and really, I I didn't draw this curve. It kind of it, I didn't draw it quite right because it's it's kind of skewed a little bit. There's uh, it, it would look something more like this, where that your minimum energy here um, it's a little bit skewed. But anyway, uh, that doesn't really affect this problem too much. Okay, so that would mean that uh, since a greater fraction of the molecules will have a lower energy a greater proportion of the products will be uh, this this form here which has the lower energy so this would be your major product and this would be your minor product all right and um, and then of course uh, this isn't looking at uh, the uh, the difference between the cis and the trans form, but um, uh, that would be, uh, you know, you would you would expect more of it to be in the trans form as well because that's the lowest energy where you have generally the bulk of uh, of molecules that have that energy available to them. Okay. So this is uh, just a little overview of some of the regio selectivity, all right? Read the, you know, the selection of the region on the molecule, uh, that selectivity, this one over this one, uh, comes about due to these uh, two principles, uh, primarily that we've talked about here, where you have the uh, greater stability, um, from more constituents, more substitution, uh, rather more um, substituents is what I'm looking for, um, as that uh, stabilizes it, and so that would be your major product. And then also you look at cis versus trans, the trans is going to be more significant, um, but you will still get some of the cis as well. And these are going to be um, all you're going to have a mixture of all of these, um, but your major product is going to be the trans isomer.